Turn to Mark 16. We got to start somewhere today. Mark 16. <laughs> Glory. Go ahead, lift your hands to heaven and get a drink. Bible says, be not drunk on wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. See, somebody else knows over there. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody's getting filled over there. <laughs> Glory to God. In Mark 16 and verse 16. And he who what? Believes. And he who what? The word, what's the word believe mean? To follow. So if you're saying you're a believer and not a follower, you're a liar. Ooh, well that's a little rough. Yeah, that's how God looks at it too. He's a justice and upright God. If you claim to be a believer and you are not a follower, you are a liar. It's real simple. Bottom line. Everybody will stand before him and he'll see if you've been a follower or a liar. And you'll be judged by it. And it says here, and he who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be what? Condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. Glory. So there's going to be a sign of those who believe or who follow, truly follow. And it says, in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. Shamama katayakia. And it didn't talk about going to school to learn another language. Amen. That's a school of the spirit. And they will take up serpents. That means you have dominion over powers of darkness. And if they drink anything deadly or by no means hurt them. In other words, if you do something stupid by accident, it will not overcome you. Does everybody get it? You know, I'm not encouraging everyone to go out and test God and siphon gas tanks, drink cyanide, because you'll die and you'll deserve to. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. These are signs as believers who are walking according to the will of God and the image and likeness and character of Christ. This is what every believer should be doing. In the body of Christ. Every single believer. If they're truly believers. Everybody. God has no respecter of person. He gives everyone according to their desire. That's why he says desire the gifts. Desire to be filled with the spirit. Desire to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Every believer should be casting out devils. Speaking with tongues to their father. Every believer. For taking dominion over the powers of darkness. Every believer. These are signs of a believer who follow. Now would you turn to 1 Corinthians 2? Well, you may say, well, I ain't doing that yet. We'll start. First, cast the devils out of yourself. Just look in the mirror. Remember we talked about this before. <laughs> look in the mirror. Fill your bathtub up. <laughs> Tell that devil to leave, and when you get slain in the spirit, fall in the bathtub and get baptized again. Praise God. <laughs> no, really, don't go home and fill your bathtub up, okay? I mean, unless you're led to. You know. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 4. Is everybody there? Would you read it with me? And my speech and my preaching were not what persuasive words of human wisdom, but in a demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of man, but the power of God. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Ooh. However, we speak wisdom among those who are what? Mature. Yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. So the wisdom of this age and the rulers of this age are coming to nothing. Yes. Even those high-tech Computer software is coming to nothing. Isn't that amazing? All the technology will come to nothing. But we speak the wisdom, the wisdom of what? God in what? A mystery. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for whose glory? Our glory. Oh, man. See, you carry the eternal wisdom within you by the anointing of the Holy Spirit which none of the rulers of this age knew, for if they had known, they, would have, they wouldn't have crucified Jesus, the Lord of glory. 
But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Now, one of the things that I want to share with you, which is important, and we're in this age right now and, and at the time right now, well, what we just spoke about in Mark 16 about cats, then out devils, praying in tongues and so forth. And also in the area where it says that our faith should be in the power of God and not in the wisdom of man. In other words, what the Lord wants us to do in the purpose of all of this, especially by being baptized in the Holy Ghost, is to make the unseen seen. Everybody say, I'm called to make the unseen seen. How many of y'all know that the real realm is the one you don't see? So as stewards of the mysteries of God and servants to the anointing of the Holy One, our call is to make those things that are not seen to be seen. Does everybody understand that? To reveal the true realm in which we belong, in which all mankind belongs, because they've been taken captive in this realm. Go to 2 Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. In verse 16, would you read it with me? Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are what? Seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And this is where a lot of believers get into frustration because they're still relying on what they see, what they feel, and what they can touch. They're putting more dependence on their bank account, their job, and other men instead of on the eternal things of what God has given us. But the Spirit is constantly quickening us, convicting us, udging us, stepping on our toes, kicking us in the butt, saying, come on, come out of this realm with me. Come out of this realm with me. And come into the eternal realm. That's why you have the Holy Spirit. Is to allow you to walk on the other side that you don't see. Because that's where you belong. Not here. But too many individuals in the body of Christ. Too many are walking in this realm. They're more concerned with food, clothing, shelter, this, that, materialism, possessions, all of these things, which the world has made individuals to believe they are successful, the amount of material they have, the amount of money they have. Why? Because they're relying on the things that they see. And the devil, who is the blinder of all, wants us to be caught up in this realm because it's only a temporary realm. The Bible says this place is going to burn up. Anyone involved in it is going to burn up with it, whether here or not. Go to 1 Timothy 3. 1 Timothy 3. That's why Jesus said, come to me and learn from me. What was he going to teach them? The other side. That's why he came and spoke in parables to show them the other side. Everything Jesus spoke about was about the other side. But he used this side as an example of what the other side is like. In 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 14. These things I write to you, though I hope to come to you shortly. But if I am delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourselves in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the truth. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. For God was manifested in the flesh. God was what? Manifested in the flesh. In other words, everything that was unseen, that everybody always wanted to know who God was, came. He came into this realm to allow all individuals to know that there truly is another realm he was justified in the spirit seen by angels preached among the gentiles believed on in the world and received up to glory now this is powerful because paul writes this letter to them to bring them understanding that god almighty was manifested in the natural realm the word became flesh and dwelt among us he came, he manifested himself in this realm, the temporary realm, that he might become the door, the way, the truth, and the life to the eternal realm. Paul writes this letter, God being manifest in the natural realm, to be seen. Everyone say, be seen. So that the unseen could be seen. And he manifested himself. That's one of the things that you and I are to do. 
We are not only to expose, but we're to manifest the other realm in this realm. That's why we just read in Mark 16. And those who believe will what? Cast out devils. Well, you're manifesting what's not seen. So many people have demons, they don't even realize it. But when they go through deliverance and healing and so forth in the process, all of a sudden spirits leave them. They go, whoa, I never knew that. I thought that just was a part of my life. I thought I was always an addict. I thought those thoughts were just a part of me. I thought that conduct was how I always just, you know, that was just me. But it wasn't them. Those were spirits that were in them because they were being taken captive by the things that they could not see. But now they're becoming seen. So by casting out devils, which is the first thing he says, you at your doing is making the unseen seen. You know, it blows my mind on all these goofy movies that are on TV. It may, they make the devil win every, every fight. They show all these demonic areas and people practicing Halloween and all of this stuff like it's okay. And then they show these, uh, all of these religious people go up to a, a demon-possessed person and hold up the cross. Like something's going to happen. They show them a Bible like something's going to happen. But the Bible says, in my name they will cast out devils. But you never see the name of Jesus mentioned on TV, do you? You never see somebody cast out a devil in the name of Jesus in one of these horror flicks, do you? Man, it just ticks me off, man. I'm going to get in that video and go, look at it, man. The dude's got a demon. Somebody cast it out in the name of Jesus. They make these devils like always win. Ooh, I hate that. And they do all this religious stuff, you know? They do all these rituals. And nobody just says, come out in the name of Jesus. Hello. Because they don't know how to make the unseen seen. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. No matter what. Is everybody Okay. So our, uh, one of the ways of making the unseen seen, of course, is by testimony. Your testimony, what God has done for you. Man, you should have seen the demon that came out of me. Hello, your testimony. And the word of the Bible, the word of truth. See, the Bible is to bring the unseen to be seen. That's what it's supposed to do. But most people just read it like a book because they don't have the spirit. But our job is to not only expose, but to manifest the unseen so that it can be seen. So the first thing we want to do is to manifest these areas in testimony in the Bible. First, it's got to be exposed to you, doesn't it? Because you can't give something to somebody which you ain't got. Hello. All right, let's go to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. Did you ever notice that everyone that most people, anyways, I'm not going to say everyone, Majority of the people who come against the gifts of the Spirit and casting out devils and all the other stuff are the ones that haven't been baptized in the Spirit because they can't give what they don't have. And, of course, in the Bible tells us, and those without understanding call things evil. But if they would just truly read the Word all the way through, they would find out that they're mistaken and that God has more for them. In First John chapter 3 and verse 7, Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So why was the Son of God manifest? To destroy the works of the devil. Why? The eternal realm was open. The eternal creator coming to the natural realm to say, listen, man, you're all deceived. Now, I want to tell you the truth. I'm going to explain to you what the other side is like. I'm going to tell you who's been deceiving you. And then I'm going to give you some weapons. And I'm going to leave my spirit with you. So you can always make the unseen seen. Let's go on. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. Now this is powerful. For his seed remains in him. And he cannot sin because he has been born again. Now this is a state of being. It's a place in the tabernacle. And I'm not talking about that today. In this the children of God and the children of the devil are what? manifest why because you'll know them by their fruit whoever does not practice righteousness is not of god nor is he who does not love his brother for this is the message that you heard from the beginning that we should love one another now listen so we're seeing here that in this area one of the things that the lord did was expose satan's kingdom and it's our responsibility to expose satan's kingdom because it's unseen 
the majority of the world. In fact, it's unseen to most of the, most of the body of Christ because there's religion has taken over. Satan's kingdom. It's our responsibility to expose Satan's kingdom by revealing the one that causes sin. And that's Satan himself. So the seed of God, which is known as salvation, is not stolen or given away by deception because the wages of sin is death. Go to 1 John 1. 1 John 1. 1 through 4. Would you read it with me? That which was from the beginning which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. That which is seen and heard, we declare to you that also you may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. Wow. So they were writing to expose or express what they have seen. That's associated with testimony, isn't it? Or like the Bible. These men have seen. And that's our responsibility is to expose and manifest that which is unseen to become seen. Go to Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. And verse 12. Read it, please. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Would you say that again? For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Would you say that one more time? For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Is flesh and blood seen? Yes. So what he's saying, man, your fight is not against, uh, against what you see. But against what? Principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. That's what your fight is against. Satan's kingdom. It's the realm that is unseen. It's amazing how many people are in mental institutions that have been diagnosed as bipolar, schizophrenia, and all kinds of other stuff. And that's all they are is demonized. So they medicate their flesh so it can't cooperate with the spirit. And they walk around like zombies. Are you hearing? If somebody in those places would just start casting out devils, hello? Well, there might be some believers in there, but they're too religious to cast out a devil. I'm telling you, time is coming right now where your way of access into areas is to spiritually fight like you've never fought before. Things are not getting better, are they? And they're not going to. You cannot rely on the government, the economy, or anything else. Your hope and trust is in the Lord and His word of truth. And the anointing and fellowship of the Holy Spirit. So we come out of this religious, goofy, stupid state of dumbness. And come into the light of Christ where we can see those things that are not seen and declare to others. Ephesians 5.11. So the first thing we want to be able to do is have a testimony, right? Now one of the ways that you can manifest Jesus is in your own life, right? People are going to see the change in you. So you want to manifest Christ in your own life and how you act, how you respond instead of react. So the second area that you're going to expose or manifest those things that are unseen to be seen is not only through the Bible and testimony, which is the first, but to your own life, through your life and how you act and what you do and your conduct wherever you are, where you're not moved by circumstances or fears or lust or money. You're moved and led by the Spirit of God because those who are led by the Spirit are sons and daughters of God. That is the second most important thing of manifesting the unseen to be seen is through your own life. In Ephesians 5 and verse 11, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. So don't get caught hanging out at the dog track. <laughs> are you hearing? Gambling. All this other foolishness of quick ways to try to make money. Don't get caught. Don't be snared up in the areas with pornography and and in and, and, and bars and so forth. Don't you? You know, there's a wonderful sign they have outside the bars that says "Food and Spirits," and they're not kidding. They should have raised their word "spirits" and put "food and demons" and really tell the truth so that people can see what's unseen in that room. I think their customers would be hanging out at the doors if they put food in demons. <laughs> There'd be no more cover charge, I can tell you that. 
they'd be handing out the full armor of God sheets right at the door, you know. Deliverance prayers right at the, as they leave. <laughs> Food and demons, I love it. And verse 12. Oh, no, verse 11 again. Let's say this again, okay? And have no fellowship with the fruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. That's our job. That's what we're called to do. That's what Jesus did, didn't he? He didn't take no garbage. He called an idiot an idiot, a hypocrite a hypocrite. Hello? Called them vote of, uh, broad of vipers. I mean, he didn't take no garbage, man. He called a demon a demon. Evil spirits, deaf and dumb spirits, spirits of infirmity, spirits of fever, fear. The Bible says God's not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and sound mind. We're to expose these things, lust and perversion. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Well, you're the light, aren't you? So everywhere you go, something's going to be exposed or manifested. Hopefully it won't be you. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep and arise from the dead. And Christ will give you life. And Christ will what? Give you you life see then that you walk circumspectly not as fools but as wise redeeming the time because the days are evil therefore do not be unwise but understand what the will of the lord is and do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation but be filled with the spirit speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart to the lord hallelujah what you're doing is you're making the unseen to be seen you're making so our third part here the third thing that we want to do is expose darkness you know did you ever get somebody that came up to you and said something you know hey did you uh do you want to go for a drink or do you want to uh uh have a joint or do you want to look at this book i have it's pornography or do you want you know or or something that's just even simple but out of the will of god one of the things that we want to do is look at a person and say, man, who told you that? What are you doing? You're exposing that which is unseen to be seen. In other words, it gives that person, well, wait a minute. What do you mean who told me that? Right. What demon told you to go do that? What demon told you you were afraid? Why can you not sleep with the light off at night? You know, these are just what we call simple things, but people think it's because it's what they see that that's just a part of life, but it's not. It's not a part of our life. That is not a part of our life. A part of our life is to expose and manifest the unseen so that it is seen. So we want to expose darkness. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians 4. Is everybody there? In verse 3. But even if our gospel, which means the word gospel means word of truth or message of truth. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing or decaying, whose minds the God of this age has blinded. Who's the God of this age? Satan. Who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. So the God of this age blinds individuals. Can he blind b believers also? Yes. He puts those blinders back on them with compromise and complacency and laziness, where they begin to be fulfilled with the things of the world and begin the devil loves to make the exchange he begins to start making the exchange of the world money for compromise see the devil loves to bribe you he said why don't you just give this up well you know you're supposed to be somewhere you're supposed to be at a service you're supposed to be at a bible study you're supposed to be somewhere and he comes and bribes you for fulfillment of the flesh what we're supposed to do is expose it condemn it not fellowship with it so that when somebody comes up to you and says something, you're saying, well, man, no, I got church that day or I'm in fellowship today or worship service. Wonderful, 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 wonderful ways to say, man, no, man, who told you that? <laughs> this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is the life. Why aren't you doing it? So what you're doing is you're exposing the unseen in that individual's life. Does everybody understand that? And the devil comes to blind, doesn't he? He's a God of this age. Go to Joel 2. Joel chapter 2. Is everybody there? Joel chapter 2. In verse 28, would you read it with me? And it shall come to pass 
afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and maid servants I will pour out my spirit in those days. And I will show wonders in the heavens and the earth, blood and fire and pillar and smoke. What's he doing? He's exposing to what? Unseen to be seen. Now, this is another area where God begins to expose the unseen to be seen. And that's through dreams and visions. Dreams and visions. Things that you're not seeing and God's trying to get, get awaken you to something that can be harmful to you. Or something that, you know, I, I get people that bring, that have dreams and they bring them to me and tell me about it. And I don't know that that dream was for me. And sometimes it's for them. Or something that's going on in the body of Christ. That's why God has prophets in the body of Christ. Because he speaks to the prophets in the body of Christ. So that the things that are unseen can be seen. And we can cooperate with the move of the spirit. So in this God will speak to you with dreams and visions. And revelations. Trances. Sometimes people will stand there and all of a sudden they're gone. And God will come and take them and show them what's what. There was a woman that um, the Lord for 40 days came and took every single day for two hours at a time and brought her to hell so she could write a book about the revelation of hell that's a powerful book by i think it's mary baxter so god will do these things you understand it what to make what is unseen to become seen and he'll do that with you in dreams and in visions in prophecy what's prophecy doing it's exposing that which is unseen to be seen exposing something that is to come or has passed. Does everybody understand? Is everybody okay? So dreams and visions. And you're to look at those. You're not to just ignore them. You're to write them down. And this is the fourth area that will God will give you. So the first area that we talked about is the, like the Bible and your testimony. The second one is to manifest Jesus in your life. The third one is to expose darkness. And the fourth one is by dreams and and visions and revelations dreams visions and revelations would you turn to second king six everybody say my job, my job. as a believer believe. is to expose and manifest that which is unseen to become seen oh yeah come on you're supposed to say oh yeah <laughs> aren't you glad we're not religious Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Jah. Second Kings chapter six. And verse 15. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant, Elijah's servant, said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open my servant's eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. Oh, if you could just see what's around you. The Bible says that you and I have a legion of angels. That's over 2,000 angels. One angel can kill 185,000 people. The Bible says that the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear God. So if you don't have a reverence of God, the angel of the Lord does not camp around you. And those who are walking right with God, there are 2,000 angels minimum that are assigned to your life, that are out there trying to coordinate, help you get a job, open doors that are of God. All of these things that these 2,000 angels are all working on your behalf. Are you hearing me? And I believe that these angels are working on our behalf from the day that we come into this realm. Because your name is written in the book of life as soon as you come into this realm. But the day that you stand in judgment before God, the day that your last breath is taken, it either stays in the book of life or it's blotted out. And that's confirmed in Revelation. He says so that your name does not get blotted out. That's why children go to heaven. Because their name has to be in the book. And that's why there's an age of accountability. But once that age of accountability is, then the clock starts ticking. So once that age starts, that clock starts ticking, you stand before God. The day your last breath is, you give up. Either the angels come and get you 
or the demons come and get you. One or the other. So everybody's name is written in the book of life. And from the moment that you're born, angels are given to you to work on your behalf. Things do not happen by coincidence or by luck. The word luck comes from the word Lucifer. So things that are prearranged by God to try and get you into his will, no matter what. Everything is predestined, but he will not force you because you have a free will yourself. We're not robots. We're to be led by the spirit and not by the flesh. So the fifth thing here that we need, that it's going to uh, make the unseen seen is prayer. Prayer. Pray, Lord, open my eyes. Pray that I may see those things that are not seen to be seen to me. Pray. Every day, that should be a part of your everyday prayer that you may be able to see, hear, and receive the things of God. Go to John 17. John 17. Are y'all getting this? You know, somebody passes out at your work. Don't run to the phone first. Go there, lay your hands on them. Command that spirit to leave, then go to the phone. Hello? Or have somebody else go to the phone and you pray over that person. You know, people have epileptic seizures. That's a spirit. I'm not going to say every single time. I mean, if there's a head injury sometimes, you know. But most of the time, most of the things that you and I see in this realm are associated because of spirits. In verse, uh, in chapter 17 of John, in verse 4, Jesus was praying. He lifted his eyes to heaven. He began to pray. He said, I've glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I have manifested your what? I have manifested your what? Name to men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. Now listen, manifesting his name. That is this... Uh, a sixth important thing. You know, when you're around, do you ever notice that these government officials, they pray, uh, they'll be praying and they'll try to bless stuff. All these people, they, they come into uh, uh, most, you know, thing, events, you know, associated with the government, they'll say, uh, uh, and, and we pray this in your name. Well, they never mention his name. Or they'll say, and everybody said amen. And they'll never mention the name of Jesus. Why? Well, first of all, fear of offending someone. And the devil's got them convinced, well, we want to respect these people. Forget it. We're to manifest the name of Jesus. That's why he said, in my name, you will cast out devils. I mean, you go up to somebody and say, in the name of Jesus. What's happening is what the unseen is going to begin to be seen. So when you pray, even in your prayers, when you're out in public or whatever, in the name of Jesus, what are you doing? You're making known that the God who answers prayer is Jesus. Not some doorknob, not some higher power, I hear, not Buddha, Allah, or whatever all those demons are, Mohammed, and, and uh, nothing but a bunch of demons. And they worship demons. They sacrifice the demons. Their organizations are attached to fear and hatred. So we as believers are to manifest the name of Jesus in every area. And give him glory. Well, who got you that? Jesus? People, my, my daughter every once in a while asks me, Hey, Dad, who won the football game? I'll say, Jesus. <laughs> Man, where'd you get that from? That's, that's nice stuff. Who blessed you with that? Jesus. No, really. Come on. Who gave you that? Jesus. No, really. Well, then you got to explain it to them. Okay. Jesus spoke to this person to do this, to do this, and to do that. And it came to me. But it came from Jesus. Do you understand? You're to be manifesting the name and giving him all the glory. All the glory. All the glory. All the glory. Why? You're showing that which is unseen to be seen in your life. It's going to be needed more than ever. You know, people give glory to themselves. Oh, you got an A on your test in school. Wonderful. Congratulations. Who gave you the wisdom? Jesus. No, I studied all night long. You idiot. Who gave you the wisdom. Jesus. Do you understand this? Jesus gets all the glory. He's the one that paid the price for me and you. The Bible says that everything was made in him and through him. So everything and for him that you see here 
all these cars, these trees, this beautiful sky, the sun, everything here was made in him, through him, and for him. Every one of us here. So he gets all the glory. This whole universe, this whole realm was made in him, through him, and for him. So he should get all the glory. Even your raises at your job. Man, I got a raise for my good work. No, you got a raise because of Jesus. So his name must be manifest. Matthew 16. That's why we praise and worship, don't we? Glory to God. Matthew 16 and verse 19. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Oh, glory. So some of us have had to lose everything to gain everything. But the one thing you've gained, if you got keys. So you can't go around and say, man, I don't even have keys. Yeah, you do have keys. You got the best keys that you could have. They're called the anointed keys, the keys of the kingdom. And whatever you bind on earth, in other words, whatever you speak in here on the natural realm is bound in the spirit realm. So what are you doing? You're making that which is unseen to become seen. So as you bind anything in this realm, whatever you're speaking in this realm, because we access the other realm by breath, which is spirit. Whatever you bind in this realm is bound in the other realm. Whoever binds anything on the earth is bound in heaven. And whoever looses anything on the earth is loosed in heaven. So those things can become manifest. Calling those things as though they are. Yeah. So binding and loosening. It's your responsibility to expose and manifest by binding and loosening. By what? Using the keys of the kingdom. That's the seventh thing. You know, eight means new beginnings, right? Praise God. First Corinthians 12. And we'll close here. First Corinthians chapter 12. And verse 7. 1 Corinthians 12, 7. So one of the things you want to be sensitive to is the areas of opportunity to expose and manifest that which is unseen to become seen. That others may be saved. That's why the Bible says, and those who are believers, these signs. What's a sign for? To make that which is unseen to become seen. 1 Corinthians 12, 7. Would you read it with me? But the manifestation, everybody say manifestation, of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For one to is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, another to the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. So we see here, the Bible says tongues is for a sign, right, to the unbeliever. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, prophecy, these are all gifts of the Spirit. God desires that we not only manifest the gifts of the Spirit, because what you're doing is manifesting Christ's love. And even the gifts of the Spirit will expose demonic activity because the devil will be exposed by the gifts of the Spirit. People will become believers by using the gifts of the Spirit. People get healed. That's a sign, isn't it? You pray for somebody, all of a sudden you get a testimony that they've been healed. And Jesus gets all the glory. These are areas where the unseen is now being seen it's our responsibility to make the unseen seen use wisdom be led by the spirit make sure you're filled with the spirit the word and prayer 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 open my eyes lord open my eyes that i may see open my ears that i may hear why because we've been called to make the unseen to become seen to all mankind that's why jesus came to make the unseen seen and it's our job too. We carry on the ministry of Christ by the Spirit of Christ that dwells within us. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Father, for your word this morning. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness in every area where we blew the opportunity, where we walked away from it because of fear or flesh or afraid of offense to someone because of our true beliefs. Lord, we repent in every area of not exposing and manifesting your kingdom. And those things that are 
unseen that they become seen. Wash us today, Master, with the blood and prepare our hearts that we may have communion with you. And as we take communion today, Lord, open our eyes that we may see what is unseen and declare it to those who can't see that they may see in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen.